In the last video, we saw the filter higher order function, which is a famous higher order function. Now we're going to look at probably the two most famous higher order functions, map and fold. So the idea of filter was that it was, as the name suggests, filtering out elements from a collection at lists as we were looking at. The idea of map and fold is that they're conceptually doing different kinds of um, algorithms rather than filtering out. Map is transforming each element of, of a collection, and fold is combining all the elements of a collection. So let's look at those two. Here's the map function. Uh, it takes in itself a function, so map is higher order, just like filter was. But whereas filter took in a function that returned a bool, map is actually going to take in a function that takes in an input type x and returns a, uh, an output of type y. Right, so these two types are what map is parameterized on. The list that map takes as input is a list of x's, and the output that map produces is a list of y's. So the idea is that map is going to transform every element of that input list, LST, by applying that function f to it to get some new transformed value. The code for that's pretty simple. Match that input list. If it's empty, return empty. There's nothing more to transform there. But if there's a head element, go ahead and apply that kind of transforming function f to the head element, and then continue recursively by mapping that function f through the rest of the tail. So as an example of that, suppose you were to map this anonymous function, lambda x arrow plus 3x, that's the function that takes in an argument x, a natural number, and adds 3 to it. Suppose you map that function through the list 2, 0, 2. Well, if you add 3 to 2, you get 5. If you add 3 to 0, you get 3. If you add 3 to 2, you get 5. So what is map doing? It's transforming each element of the list individually and producing an output list. So there's no reason for um, the function that is passed into map then to know anything else about the rest of the elements of the list. It does its work just by looking at a single element at a time. It does that transformation element by element. Here's another example. Suppose you map odd through 2, 1, 2, 5. Right? So uh, is 2 odd? No, it's even. So the first element of the output list is false. But 1 is odd, so we get true. 2 is again odd, uh, even, sorry, so we get false, and 5 is odd, so we get true. Another example, this one's more complicated of a transformation. Suppose you map a natural number n to the list containing two elements. Uh, the first is whether n is even, the second is whether, is whether n is odd. And we map that through the list 2, 1, 2, 5. Well, then we get a list of lists as output. Each of those internal lists has two bools in it. Uh, and the first one says whether the original element was even. The second one says whether it was odd. So is two even? We get true, false. Yes. Uh, but one is not even, so we get false, true, and so forth. So each of these transformations that you, you, you apply to this list can be as, as complicated as you want. Uh, any kind of function that you write there uh, and produce different types of values as output even. You know, this is a, a, an idea, this map idea, that applies not just to lists, but other kinds of data collections as well. You could imagine applying this to stacks, queues, maps, uh, any kind of data structure probably that you're familiar with. One of the ones we've seen so far is options. The map function makes sense with options as well. So you could map a function f through an option. Uh, we'll call it xo here. It's an option that maybe contains a value of type x. And we'll return something that maybe contains a value of type y. Like this transformation f is being applied to that option. So the code that we write for that uh, is to match the option that contains the x, uh, well, maybe contains a value of type x, against none. If there's nothing there, then just continue to return none. There's nothing to transform. But if there is a value x wrapped in the sum constructor, then we'll return the result of transforming that value by applying f to it. And of course, we have to wrap that in the sum constructor again as well. So that's map, the idea of transforming elements of a collection, which uh, might be uh, an optional value, might be a list, or something even bigger. Now, the other really famous higher order function that I want to talk about is fold. So the idea of fold is that it combines elements of a list together. So think about filter 
uh, the number of outputs it could produce. It might produce the same number of outputs as were in the original list or fewer, maybe even zero. But it doesn't transform each element individually. Map, on the other hand, always produced an output list that had the same number of elements as the input list. But of course, they weren't necessarily the same elements. It transformed them using a function. The idea of fold is that it's going to combine all of the elements of the list together, kind of like boil them down to a single value, if you will. Here's how that works. Fold is parameterized on two types. And let's start with the list type here. So it's going to take in a list whose elements have type x. And now notice the output. It's going to give us back a single value of type y. So it's like combining all of the elements of that list x into a single value of type y. Uh, an example of that might be, for example, summing up all the elements of a list. Like you might have a list containing lots of elements, sum all of them together to produce a single value. Now, in that case, these two types would be identical. You'd have like a list of nats uh, and then return just a nat. Uh, but you could do more complicated trans kinds of transformations too, like maybe you're transforming those nats into floating point numbers and returning their floating point addition or something like that, in which case those two types would be different. Okay, so uh, we've explained what LST here is as the input list and what the, the purpose of this output of type Y is. What about these other values that fold takes in? B is going to be a base value of type Y. It's like the initial thing that we want to start off with as, as what we're combining all the elements with. Uh, and F is going to be the function that does the combination. So it takes an element from the list, like this is the next element for the list that it's going to process of type X. And it takes the result of having combined all the other elements so far, so that's going to be of type Y, and gives us back the new result of having combined that element in. So the code for doing that, match that list. If it's empty, return that base value. So this is what gets us started off with. Right? We need some value of type Y to return in the case it's an empty list that the client of this function has passed in. OK, so that gets us started. Uh, but if the list was not empty, if there's at least a head element in it, then we need to combine that head element in. So here's how we do that. We first fold the function f over the tail of the list with that base value. So, right, we want to eventually get down to that base value. That's the main thing that we have to start off with. So call fold recursively to combine all the rest of the elements of the list. And then once we know what their combination is, go ahead and apply that function f to, to combine the head element in with the recursive result from the tail. Now, the first time you see this, this can look pretty impenetrable. So let's take a look at some concrete examples to see how it works. Uh, oh, right, right. By the way, uh, fold is also known by another name, or rather, fold is very similar to another function that works about the same, uh, called reduce. And that's the reduce in map reduce. Now, I said these were high, famous higher order functions. Uh, let me show you why they're famous. Uh, there's this paper from Google titled MapReduce, which explained how it ran its infrastructure on a um, computational paradigm named MapReduce. And in fact, uh, this MapReduce comes from functional programming, uh, a map function that processes values and a reduce function that merges all of the values. So this is actually a pretty famous piece of architecture. Uh, and there's an open source implementation of it have, called Hadoop that you might have used. So fold is basically the reduce and map reduce. Uh, it's just it handles the base case a little bit differently. We won't go into that here. OK, so uh, let's start looking at some concrete examples. First, a, a type. So suppose if you were going to fold the uh, AND function on Booleans. Now, if you pass that function into fold, what do you get? You get a function that takes in a list of Booleans and an initial Boolean, a base value, and returns uh, another Boolean. Right? So in the case that the list you pass in is empty, it's going to give you back that base value. In the case it's non-empty, it's going to take the, the conjunction of all of the elements in that list along with that base value. Here's another example. Let's do it with natural numbers this time. Suppose you were going to fold the multiplication operation over the list 2, 3, 4, starting off with the base value 1. Well, if you multiply 2, 3, 4, and 1 together, you get 24. But more particularly, here's the actual computation that's going to occur with the fold. Um, you're going to take that base value 1 and then multiply 
the rightmost list element into it. All right, so we've got one times four. Then you're going to take the result of that and multiply the next element in. So that was three. So we're going to multiply three in next. Then multiply the next list element in. That's two. So we'll multiply two in. So we've got four times three, that's 12, times two, that's 24. And indeed, that unit test does go through. So notice kind of the structure of what's occurring here. We're kind of going from right to left. Uh, so we take that base value and use that function, in this case multiplication, to fold in the next element from the right, and then fold in the next element from the right, and then fold in the next element from the right, until we get all the way up to the head of the list there and we're done folding things in. Of course, if the list was empty, there'd never be anything to fold in, and we'd just return that base element. Okay, so in some other libraries, this fold function is called fold right because of that. Uh, here's another example with Booleans. Suppose we were folding the uh, conjunction of the logical and of Booleans over the list uh, that we've written here with the starting base value true. Uh, well, then we would start with true here, which I'm just going to abbreviate as T in my little comment here. And we're combining that uh, with, with conjunction. I'm going to write that as double ampersand. So we've got true from this base value. We're then combining that with the and of true from the rightmost element of the list. And then combining that again with false, that's the next element of the list. And then true, and then true. OK. And the logical conjunction of anything that contains a false anywhere is going to be false. And so the, that's the output of folding that and function over that list. One more example. Suppose we were going to, to take a list of lists and fold the append operation over it. OK, so let's see how that works out. We're starting with the base value of the empty list. So that's here on the right. We're then appending in. Remember, uh, double plus is the syntactic notation we defined as a, a kind of infix operator for the append function. So we're going to append the rightmost element of that list to it. So we append 4. Then we're going to append 2, 3 onto the front of that, and then empty onto the front of that, and then 1 onto the front of that. So if you append all of those together, you've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. And indeed, that unit test does go through. OK, so that's map and fold, two of the most famous higher order functions uh, made famous under the names map and reduce by Google. But it wasn't just Google that made them famous. These functions have been famous in uh, many functional languages and many libraries for a long time now. Uh, they go back a long way in history. And they are the basis for processing collections of elements, processing data structures. Uh, in a way that factors out the functions being applied uh, from the iteration over the internals of the data structure.